Hey guys, it's Ross. Today's video, we're going to be kind of just talking about a bunch of random topics involving figs. Uh, it's kind of like a little fig ramble is what I like to call them. We did some of these in the spring that were pretty much just a culmination of different observations that I've been making. We're going to talk about the plate of figs that I just showed you guys. This is going to be a long video. Just a few observations here on the patio that I've been making. Um, and also just kind of talking about what it's like to be eating these figs in the fall and, and ripening in them in the fall um, and some of the like the challenges involving all that um, as you can kind of tell right now the sun's blazing it's 2 30 on a saturday we're almost into november but this whole section of the patio is really getting a nice warmth uh, from the sun and it's been a bit unusual because this is a section that i normally attribute to not getting a whole lot of light when I think about the patio and how the sun is arranged in the spring, the sun a lot of times is actually over more this way. And by the time it gets to this part of the sunroom here, like the roof, the sun is down and then this whole section of the patio gets no light. But at this time of the year, it's a bit different, right? We're almost, we're in the fall solstice now, even though I would have said that you know, we've been in the fall since early September. We're almost into October right now. I think it's like the 28th of September right now, guys. But I would say sometime around the 5th, we started really getting cooler nights. And I would have considered us to be in the fall pretty much at that point. Um, however, you know, now that like I was saying is that the sun is in a different angle and there's still, there's still leaves on these trees, right? We're not at dormancy just yet. It's still pretty warm outside. Uh, this is kind of the area that these trees should be in. I, and I really value having a, an, a warmer location, especially in the spring, to get our, our figs off of the, to a better head start, right? Uh, we talk a lot about that in the spring and how we just have a really cool spring that's really not conducive to getting our figs off to the greatest of head start. That's why we have the greenhouse back here to help, sort of help with that. But this this whole row, I made this observation today and a few days ago. I was out here very early, paying attention to where the sun was at this time of the year. And I was shocked to learn that pretty much this whole area doesn't get a whole lot of light until about now. It's 2.30. This section of the patio is not really getting light. This area here starts to get light. You can see it's shaded right now in parts of it. But this is just now getting light sometime around 10 30 11 whereas the the other side of the you know where the other side of this wall here where it's not the patio where we have a lot of them planted in the ground they're actually getting morning sun and they're getting actually a lot of sun um, compared to like if we were to compare this row versus the row over there where the the in-ground trees are versus all this what is definitely happening is that this row right here is not getting a whole lot of sun. And I know this is pretty obvious, you would think, right? Put them in an area that's getting more sun, but the way that the patio is just set up and all these trees, you know, this is an area that's getting a lot of sun in the spring or even maybe in the summer, but right now it's getting none. And this is really a crucial time for these figs because this is all my late varieties. This is the varieties that still have figs on them that still haven't ripened, that I've been kind of sitting here thinking, what are you guys doing? You know, they're, they're almost been really performing pretty poorly. And it's across the board that they're just, a lot of these are covered with figs. And I couldn't really figure it out because they had such an incredible start to the season. But this, it's obvious now, guys, that, you know, they're not getting a whole lot of sun and I'm, I'm not gonna put any more figs in this location, this row is going to be eliminated next year. Um, yeah, it sounds pretty simple, right? But um, who knew? I think, and you know what else is going on is that the trees are growing every year. They're getting taller and taller. So if you're not really paying attention to what's kind of going on up here and where the sun's at every year, you could kind of be making some mistakes. And uh, I wish I had not made this mistake. Not that this is really the most important thing to me because at this point 
I'm pretty much done. I'm happy with how the season went. And that's kind of what I want to lead into here is that the season's just been phenomenal, guys. Uh, from start to finish, this has been one incredible fig season. And I don't know how somebody in the Northeast could possibly complain. This is like the best season I've ever had. Um, it's been a very um, warm spring. So we got everything off to a really nice head start. We had a pretty reasonably dry summer that was also very warm. And then our fall so far has been almost completely dry and we've been pretty warm. Um, so things are actually struggling. I would say, you know, things like uh, my fall vegetables and maybe some other crops that people are growing, uh, like vegetables in general or annuals in general, really didn't do all that well this year for people in the in the area but things like my perennials that even apples as an example if you were getting apples this year and it was so dry i heard a couple growers talking about it on growingfruit.org they really are loving their apples this year they have such a higher bricks because it's been so much it's so dry um this fall and it's the same thing with the the figs is that i've been able to get a few of these that or believe it or not, sort of dried up on the tree. I've had a number of dried figs this this fall, like Malta Black, Improved Celeste. Uh, we had some dried Azores Dark. We had uh, a couple really well ripened Smiths. We had uh, let's see, what else did we have that was pretty dried? Um, we had some pretty well ripened Black Madeiras. We had our Verdino del Nord, which is actually right here has been drying up on the tree wonderfully every single time. Here's actually the inside of this wonderful, beautiful fig. It's a fantastic variety. We did a review just on this. Uh, take a bite. It's pure jam. Very thick. It's wonderful. I also have a variety here. It looks like it's already dried up because we cut it in half yesterday and it's been sitting on the counter and it kind of dried up a little bit on the counter. This is De La Roca, and this is an incredible fig, guys. This is just like the Col de Doms, and it was able to dry on the tree for me the first one of the year. It's, it's insanely good. Yeah, that's like nuts, guys. That's one of the best figs I ever had. Oh my God. It's so chewy. This is just very uncharacteristic so far, guys, of our season. This is not normally what's supposed to happen. And I'm gonna bring you guys around and just, you know, I'll bring you guys around right now. We'll go back to that plate. But some observations here on the figs themselves is that a lot of these figs are, for one, drying up on the tree, but two, I don't really have many of them left. Like. Um, this is how it really should be and it, this is how it was last year as well at this time of the year I didn't have many figs to even eat right because of the way that I do this you guys remember this right in the spring We let these figs wake up we thin out the new branches and then we pinch those branches once they get those two dots right and when we pinch we pinch usually by the earliest we can but we're pinching most of the time by July and what What's happening here in July is that uh, if you fast forward 90 days, you're looking at September 1st. So I'll, I'll usually try to pinch the earliest is like May 15th, which puts us at ripe figs by August 15th. Then I'll pinch again June 1st and we get things by September 1st. And then we do September 15th, then we do July 1st. And the figs that are ripening right now are the figs that we had pinched by July 1st. And July 1st is really the last date that I pinched these trees. I don't do this anymore. And you can see here's another variety that we did on July 1st. This is Mega Celeste. And Mega Celeste is honestly a horrible fig, <laughs> but it's ripening two crops of Maine for me this year. And you can see how how loaded this thing is. It was it's just a loaded variety. It was loaded this spring. Um, and it's loaded again with a second crop, but that's because we had it in the greenhouse. And I could do the same thing with any other early variety. I could do the same thing with, you know, probably Moscatel Preto and 
Neruccio de Elba and Violet de Bordeaux. I could do this with so many of the, the easy varieties that will fruit. And this is gonna be the same thing. I could get a second main crop here like I did for years with my Azores Dark. So the point is, is like, I don't have many figs left on the tree because if you think about these figs that are ripening, um, if I were to pinch them July 1st, they would be ripe now. So there's very few varieties at this point that I haven't gotten a taste, that I haven't gotten to um, pinch them earlier in the season. So the ones that we pinched very early, excuse me guys, like May 15th and July 1st, or I'm um, sorry, June 1st, those are done. Like most of those varieties are completely done. Here's Moscatel Preto that we probably pinched this, you know, June 1st and it's got one fig on it left. You know, so a lot of them are, are completely bare and look very vacant. Even my Smith here, we got to, to ripen that one up. Every fig on the Villa de Bordeaux is done. Here's one that we had pinched, hopefully to get one by the very end of the season, to get one by November 1st. So it really depends here, guys. Um, you can really tell when these things, you pinch them and you can obviously then fast forward in time and say, all right, well, it should ripen by this date. You know, here's another one. These are all done. They're all, every single one of these. So it's pretty awesome. And I think the other observation I wanna show you guys real quick is that remember how I was saying that this row here isn't getting a whole lot of light, even though it is right now. Um, this row compared to, let's say, my in-ground trees on the, the west side of the house, the west side of the house gets tons of sun this time of the year. So basically this whole bed that we've created is gonna be perfect. And so is this, this row over here that we've created. All of this is getting a lot of light, a lot of sun, a lot of heat at this time of the year. And the difference between the speed of ripening is quite significant. You know, if you have a tree at this time of the year that's in full sun versus a tree that's in half sun, the difference is just astronomical, um, obviously, right? I think this really does matter at this point of the year. So pay attention to that. Just one little observation that I made. You know, things become obviously just more and more apparent and obvious as we go through the season um, or go through years of growing figs. Let's, uh, let's open up some more of these and show you guys some more varieties that I've been getting here. Here's a hated de Argentile that looks a bit dry. Let's see if this one came out well. That does look pretty good. I know my mom loves this variety. This is her favorite. So let's, and she doesn't really like figs, which is kind of crazy. Wow. That's very, very strange. I think this one needs a lot of heat to ripen properly. I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't think that's really a fig that, if you're ripening it now, I don't think that's probably a good idea. And I think Herman actually mentioned that years ago, saying that you shouldn't grow this fig in this area because it needs a lot of heat. And I sort of agree with that. I'm in agreement. I definitely am in agreement now. And I, I, you know, I have a greenhouse, so I can just stick it in the greenhouse, everything will be all right. Let's open up some more of them here. This is uh, Fico Gentile. Get many of these Adriatic types. Not bad. Tastes like a strawberry. Not many of these are really uh, perfectly ripe. Here we have a Sweet Joy. This is just a wonderful, wonderful fig, guys. Absolutely wonderful. That's great. This is a fig that everyone in a warm climate, I think, should be growing. It's a really good honey fig. We even have some Smith. Look at that. That's photo worthy right there. Let's take a photo of this guy. 
Say goodbye. Fantastic. Here's um, our first Raven Decalci of the year. Oh, that looks really good. Also very fo photo worthy. Now, some other observations is that some of these are just not, they're not at the quality I, I would want them to be. They're just not, they don't have the heat. Um, they're ripening very slowly. You know, some of them are still good, especially when they're dry, right? Like this guy here, the Verdino del Nord we showed you guys, maybe this Socorro Black. I think that's the, the big difference is that if you're in the fall and you have a dry fall, you, you're, pretty, you're pretty good. You're in a good spot here. But if you don't have a dry fall, here is, by the way, Borges Soak Grease. Compared right next to it, Violet's, um, Borges Soak Grease and Socorro Black. They look very different to me. But if you have a nice dry fall, I think you have a nice advantage in that you can still ripen decent quality, um, for sure. Uh, but my only issue is that they're still not going to taste that great. So what you should try to really focus on, I think, in an area with a dry fall, is getting figs to really dry up on the tree. If you can do that, they're going to have that sugar content. They're going to taste incredible. Um, you know, let's open up. This is the Verdino down north. This is probably the epitome. You know, that's like pure, pure, pure jam. Same thing with the De La Roca that we had earlier. Really good, way better than um, most most of the figs on this plate at this time of the year. Um, here's another fig. This is a fig that was on its way to be drying. It seems like, eh, not really. This is a GM one twenty five. Now, what I've been noticing. This is the biggest point here, is that if you have a fall with very big temperature fluctuations, you get these, this splitting down the side. Also cracking, and this cracking then turns into fissures, which turn into this. This is a fissure. You also get lots of splitting on certain varieties, but I think a lot of the splitting can occur as well from just having too much water, but even just big temperature changes like this will completely ruin a fig. This is uh, Red Libya, not a fig that I'm going to be growing in the future. Um, this is another, this is a Red Libya, this is, I'm not entirely sure what these, oh, this is a, a poorly ripened tree, or bat, or just a tree that's in bad condition. We have lots of Cavalieri that have been doing this, splitting down the side. Those are two varieties, I think, Red Libya and Cavalieri that are doing this. Also, Sandrosa. You can see the big cracks. These have gotten some huge cracks, some of these on them. And as a result, they're not ripening very well. Yeah, this one I picked yesterday, so it doesn't look that great, but it still tastes okay. But a lot of them now that are ripening are not doing hot, not doing really well at all. So I think I'm going to get rid of probably that tree. Um, there's a number of figs that you realize, oh, this is why this is happening. And this is just not a good fig to have. Um, unless you can get them to ripen way earlier. If I can get them a month earlier than they were this year, then I'd say, all right, well, let's, let's try it again. But, you know, my Syndrosa is such a late fig, but the fact that it, it really gets manipulated easily in this these temperature fluctuations. Same thing with Mare to Do, it seems like, is having a lot of issues with the temperatures and the, and the cracking, and so is uh, De La Senora Hibernenka, but I'm a big fan of De La Senora Hibernenka for other reasons. Um, but you got things like, you know, these are some hardy Chicago types that are like pretty much perfect in this weather. Even though it's so 
cool outside, they're still doing fantastic. So, you know, uh, I think there's some figs out, out here, even Smith that's doing so well in this, doesn't seem to be bothered. So it's like, why would I grow Cavalieri or Red Libya or Sandrosa or any of the other figs I named that aren't ripening well? Why would I grow them over this, this hardy Chicago type that uh, I think this actually here is Azores Dark, if I'm not mistaken. That's literally pure jam on the inside. Very dense, great flavor to it. Why put myself through all this extra work. Oh, that's actually really good. Wow, that was the best one. Here is uh, Verdino del Nord, another one that's dried up. Just pure, pure jam. This one's probably gonna be even better. Yeah. That's real good. So, you know, those are the observations here, guys. You got the cracks, even this is LSU Scott's Black. See all the cracks down the side because of the temperature fluctuations? So it's kind of growing figs in the fall, pretty much in a nutshell here, guys, is that we want to maximize the amount of light. We want to have varieties that are not going to be doing this kind of thing. They're going to be putting out these cracks in the skin. Or if they are, it's going to be minor. They're not going to be splitting. They're not going to have those big fissures down the side and they're gonna ripen well and quickly in the fall weather. I have the De La Senora Hivernenka that I was mentioning. While it does get those big cracks in the side, the fig ripens very quickly. Even in this cool weather, these figs are gonna be, honestly, from this hard point to swelling to ripe in a very short time and I really like that about this variety, especially at this time of the year. Figs that can ripen very quickly, even now, are gonna be king for me. But also the varieties that can dry up on the tree that aren't gonna get that cracking. If they're getting that cracking, they're not gonna dry. You know, it's just not gonna, most of the time, it's just not gonna happen. Um, so, yeah, those are the little observations here. Let me see if there's anything else real quickly that I may have wanted to go over with you guys. Oh, you know, it's, it's a good idea to pick up all these leaves. It really is. Uh, we don't wanna, if these limbs have not lignified perfectly yet, we don't wanna be spreading these, these leaves, having them decay. This decay actually encourages SWD. Um, you know, also the, the rust that could be potentially on these leaves. We don't want this to spread to other trees. So I think it's a good idea to pick them up. Yeah, it's some extra work, but uh, I think it's worth it. So I'm gonna come around here and pick up a lot of these leaves um, sometime today. But yeah, I think that's mostly what I wanted to talk about. There's probably one other topic, but it's not coming to me right now, guys. Anyway, I wanna thank you guys all for watching this one. We'll talk to you soon. See you for tomorrow's video.